and boom, just like that, we're live. Hi, everybody. Jay Smith here. It's FP and Outdoors, and I'm here with the bearded one, Paul Fleming. What's up, everybody? Oh, man, we got a full house today. We do. Huh? We've got Ashley Johnson from That's the Coast me. Guard coming yep. in to talk about Boater Safety uh, Month. That's Absolutely. almost over. And then we've got Scott Fletcher and Caleb, Caleb. correct? His son Caleb yep. is in here today, and we're going to talk about custom poles and uh, rods in general and, and get the inside skinny and all that kind of stuff because... Uh, I got a lot of questions. In the meantime, though, uh, this past weekend, dude, that was oh, was that, that not cool? That was awesome. So this past weekend, we went out to what is that, Port Ritchie? Yeah, where we start. We started out in Hudson at Bobby's house and Bo- uh, Captain Bobby Carroll's, yep. and, and then ran into uh, Newport Ritchie. So Greg and Brian Lake, Lake yes. own a stilt house out there. The oh, family awesome. owns it, and uh, I think they've had it since I think he said two thousand four. Yeah. And uh, so we got to stay the night out there and go fishing out of Anclote in the morning and everything. It was an awesome trip. That was man. cool. Uh, I did not have time to edit out the interview I did with Greg and Brian there, but I'll have that hopefully here soon. And I'm editing out the whole video of the trip. But uh, man, what a great time, man. So we, we get there and just, we, I'd uh, been out there. We got bait off the house. That just so much bait oh, loaded underneath the house, right? Yeah. And it's just until, awesome until, on the outside. Until the tide went out, then there was nothing. Yeah, and then there was zero things yeah. there, yeah. And then uh, we get in there, and then you don't know what to expect. And, yeah. it, and it's just a big open room with all set up with the kitchen and the beds, yeah. and it's just perfectly set up, deck all the way around the outside. Wow. So it's just so cool there. Uh, when the tide was in there, there was all those snapper underneath oh, there and everything. It was snapper. just loaded with bait. You have no zero problems with bait yeah. while you're there, so... Man, uh, so the the plan was to go there, set up the traps at night, and uh, go early in the morning, get our bait, and my phone's going off, <laughs> get our bait, head out to the island, and catch big snook, and hopefully find some tarpon. What's funny is, I asked Bobby before we leave there, I'm like, you know, tarpon, tarpon. He's like, I don't know yet, yeah. man, I think we got another week or two. Everybody else I asked after that was like, yeah, man, I've been seeing them for two weeks now. And then <laughs> while we're out there, me and Brian saw a nice, which was probably about a 50, yeah. 60 pounder, literally two feet from the back of the boat when you guys disappeared for an hour. These guys disappear for an hour to get bait, come back, and then we all go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, the guy with the back problems threw the net almost all the time. I know, like, right? And then didn't even use the bait. I'm he comes back and collapses <laughs> on the deck of the boat. But, uh, mm-hmm. All right, so... While we were out there, we had a few hookups. I hooked up with a monster snook. Lost it. Broke off. Uh, my fault. All yeah. on me. I missed one. I think, was it Brian or Greg? That Greg, that? Greg missed one off the bed. Yeah, and his broke off too. Yeah, monster, that, monster that was monster probably snook. his personal best. And then uh, we got video of Bobby's battle that he actually he actually got this one <laughs> with the help. An epic save <laughs> from Paul. So we're going to go ahead and roll that video right now. You guys can watch it right here when it pops up there. We're going to roll Bobby's big snook video here real quick. Yeah, baby. Our mic's on, Max. All right, uh, so Bobby right now is fighting the singing. I'm sure you can hear him talking a little bit. If you watch in the middle of this battle here, though. I think it's probably right about here. He's going, quick, turn your he, motor he's up. up the motor. <laughs> no, no, yeah, he's almost there. He's about to say it now. Do I do like a rap video beat down? Like, we can't hear it, but they can hear yeah, him talking. Hear. And I'm sorry about yeah. all the wind, everybody. Sorry about that noise. That's a nice fish. That's a nice right now, he's bottom. yelling for Paul. Trim it up. Trim the motor up, Paul. I'm filming at this point. Yeah. <laughs> now, as soon as he starts going, oh, oh I got to get it out. It's right about here. Oh, was he yeah, heading under Paul. the... Oh, the boat? boats are over there, right? So now he's yelling for Paul. Paul, trim it up, trim it up. Paul's like, do I trim it up? So oh, he got the wrapped. camera. Now watch real close here. It's about to come up. And you'll see Paul right now. Oh, Paul just reaches in, grabs the tail, and yanks it out of the water. No problem. Like, like Paul didn't even have to try save right there. Yeah, and then look at this pig. Get in there, get in there. Woo! That's teamwork, brother. That's teamwork, brother. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> nice fish, but all right, don't hit me in the face. Yeah, that'd be hit me in the head with the, yeah. the... The line actually was wrapped around the prop, so... <laughs> yeah, this is the part this is a little bigger than what you look for. Yeah, yeah. Right, this is my teaser that I put up there. Know what to do. Know what 
on each side of the fish. Probably over 40. I'd say yeah, fish this way. 40, this 40, 40, yeah. Nice one, Bobby. That's about a 40. Float a fishing experience. Mm -hmm. Bookie Sport trip today. It's a fishing island, too. Uh, you, we talked right over Bobby. Bookie trip today. Yep. <laughs> As he turns off, it was a monster snook, man. It was, it was such a great time. Bobby, it's, we saw a ton of them, though. Bobby takes his fishing very, very serious. One of the best fishermen I know. So knowledgeable. I mean, he's a young guy, too. I mean, he's still got years to put more and more knowledge under there. But he's leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of the people that I For know. For sure. Like, so, uh, you know, Bobby is actually, uh, can you go to my uh, computer here real quick, Max? Yep. Here's a picture of that snook and Bobby holding it. Okay, now Bobby is probably one of the best fishermen I know, but has the least fashion sense of anybody I know there. He, we finally got him to cut that mullet off, right? Now he's got this, like, he's got this beard like he, I don't know, he's trying to be like a hipster Amish guy or something here, so... Uh, here's what I did. Hold now, on. B Bobby, there can only be one bearded one. There can only be one bearded <laughs> one. And he's trying to do the twisty mustache thing. Yeah. But it's yeah. like five years too late. So, uh, now, like I said, Bobby's the best fisherman I know. He's one of the, one of the greatest. Bad, bad sense of fashion there. So, anyways, uh, our producer, Max, he's a crazy Russian hacker, and he made some new software for us. It's, uh, you've heard of Siri and Alexa. Yeah. Well, he made one named Vigor, and what you can do... <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, man. What, what Vigor does is uh, you can run a picture through it, and it'll show you, if you ask it, what he would look like as this or that. It'll, it'll go ahead and give you a, 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 you know, a, what, a, re a rendering, let's say, right. of what you would look like as such. So, uh, you know, hipster Amish guy, we, we went ahead and took a look at that. Go ahead and pull that up. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's what Bobby would look like as a hipster Amish guy. And then, uh, so I was like curious. I was like, oh, man, that beard is ragged. Yeah. What would he look like without the beard, Vigor? You could keep it on there. You're ruining my joke here. <laughs> 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 now, that's just Vigor being me. Come on, Vigor. Oh. What would he be without, without the beard? <laughs> oh, no. Come on, Vigor. Be nice. Be nice. Let's be real this time, Vigor. Let's, let's be real this time. Let's not. No jokes. Ooh. Hey, did you guys hear that right there? That was a collective damn from all the female <laughs> viewers out here. Uh, that's Beckham right there. That's the man. That's a beautiful man right there. Beckham will let you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He'll let oh. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Beckham's so beautiful, I, I even gotta stop in a bit. You know what I mean? That could be you, Bobby, if you just stop messing around with these with these I don't know, you probably have to work out a little bit, do some squats. Yeah. For do sure. some I don't know, the Abbott. dad bod is in, right? Oh, is he's, that the thing now? I don't know if Bobby's got the dad bod so much as uh, <laughs> the fisherman's bod. Is it <laughs> bottom of a beer can? <laughs> anyway, I'm just messing with you, Bobby. We love you, bro. The only thing he said was, as the bald guy speaks. <laughs> uh, very true. <laughs> All right, uh, don't, don't go to mine anymore here. I got this thing set up for later. All right, cool. So <laughs> that was my Bobby joke. Don't be mad, Bobby. I was just joking, man. Vigor, I can't control what Vigor does. No. <laughs> Vigor will be around. We, is that the war? See, you, you, is it the war going on? You, you, you've upset Vigor. It's turned <laughs> lights down and <laughs> land the rushes. It's actually Beckham. He's like, how dare you put my photo in this raggedy show? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll get to business here. We've got Ashley in here today to talk about Voter Safety Month. Uh, if you haven't seen the video yet, Paul and I did a ride along with Sector 19er, St. Petersburg, 10-4 and out. Uh, we took a ride with them, and they did a man overboard exercise, and that was, that pretty, was pretty cool, cool. man. Yeah, that was, that was definitely cool. The only thing that would make that a little more realistic is that he goes, ah, as, they, as they throw the guy overboard. I think that would be some curse words going off if somebody was really going yeah, on. You know, yeah, I'm saying, but we got to keep it clean for the folks. So uh, yeah, that's the only thing I could see difference. But it was super cool going out on that boat and everything and seeing how everything worked. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. Um, definitely have a couple boats down there in Station St. Petersburg. We have a whole bunch of stations all along the coast, the west coast of Florida, and all of Florida and all around the U.S. Um, and even overseas, we have a, a couple of boats out there. So. Sure. It, it was uh, pretty cool getting it. 
we got to go in and uh, guys were working on stuff. There was a bunch of stuff going on, so we got to see kind of the inner workings. You guys don't sit around much. No, definitely not. There's, no, <laughs> there's always something happening, especially in this area. I don't know. It's crazy. In Florida, everybody likes to be out on the boats all year round. Uh, yeah, it's a thing, we, we definitely have a big influx of, of boaters now. Yeah, well, yeah. and now it's Memorial Day weekend. This uh, is the weekend that I always say I'm not going on the water. Yeah, I, I made the mistake do. last year. Actually, last year, this is how crazy it was. I was out with Brian. No so holidays here. We we mm. go into the back. I mean, of course, we're on the water at like 530 in the morning. There's nobody out at that point. We go back into this backwater area, do some fishing. Uh, we go out to go to a different spot. Now it's about 830, maybe going on 9 o'clock. And we come out of the backwater, and it opens up in the Tampa Bay. We're on the uh, Tierra Sea side over there on, on the south yeah. side of the uh, Skyway. And we come out, and it was like, da, 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 da. thousands of boats. Oh. It just oh, yeah. seemed like they were everywhere. And now, at this point, we're thinking, where are we going to go fish, wow. man? There's people everywhere. And I even the words come out of my mouth. I'm like, it can't get any worse than this. Uh-huh. Mm, one of those low-flying little uh, oh, light, ultralights. Ultralight yep. planes comes maybe 50 feet over our head. Wow. I'm like, let's go home, man. Let's <laughs> oh, God. That's like, that's like uh, opening grouper. You get out 10 miles, you won't see a boat. You'll get 30 miles of your number, and they're everywhere. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. all over you like yeah. locusts. Yeah. So uh, this is probably a very busy... Definitely very busy time. Anytime there's a three-day weekend or holiday weekend, um, spring break, especially any of those times, there's so many boaters on the water, and there's people that are coming from all over, tourists. Um, but even the people that are going out for the 10 millionth time on their boat something's going to go wrong. Um, we always have calls that we're going out to, and it's anything from a disabled engine. Someone just wasn't checking um, what their engine was doing before they left the dock, didn't put their boat plug in, didn't bring enough fuel. Never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we just want to remind boaters to, to check over everything before you head out. Um, we say safety starts before you launch. So check everything as it's on the trailer even before you you hit the water especially um make sure you have those life jackets i see you got some awesome life jackets the there the cool one the cool yeah. one. life jacket yeah people always think they think life jackets and they think the big orange crazy that's what i was worried jackets. about the other day <laughs> yeah but in reality there's all sorts of life jackets out there as long yeah. as it's coast guard approved mm -hmm. that's all we really care about as long as it's coast guard approved and then if you have a, a child make sure it's child sized and it's sure. fitted for a child um doesn't you don't do you any good if it just floats right off your kid no definitely not yeah. um and make sure it's fitted correctly because <laughs> yeah if just you, sinking like a rock right yeah, for sure if you don't have it buckled um that could even end up choking them and it can do yeah. more harm than it can for do sure good. and there's there's some actually really cool programs um pinellas county sheriff's office and uh the hillsborough county sheriff's office have uh at some of the bigger boat ramps they've got a big um board set up with oh, yeah. kids life jackets so if you don't have one for for your kid's size you can borrow one there's and then when you come back, you just put it back up on the board. Yeah, there's so. really no reason to be out on a boat and not have a life jacket. Yeah, there's for sure. There right. isn't. And it's federal law. You have to have enough um, on your boat once you go out. Um, you just have to. Yeah, so that well. can end up equaling a hefty ticket, too. You just, uh, yeah. I mean, and a lot, a lot of the boat shows, the, they're there and they give them away to the kids. Yeah, yeah, oh, they yeah. do. They do. Yeah, all this stuff is out of my personal ditch bag. That's awesome. And, and that's what we look for. I want to make sure. We would rather have you have way more equipment. <laughs> and be safe mm -hmm. than not have anything and you're out there in the middle of a storm boat turns over and you're you're sitting mm -hmm. sol out in the middle of the ocean yeah yeah um, i've uh I, i've had people say stuff to me before man why are you bringing all this stuff why you got duct tape i'm like why wouldn't you have duct tape yeah, yeah. for sure <laughs> duct tape and wd-40 right yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, to bring everything yeah. just about i mean just even in the kayak i'm a kayak fisherman <laughs> I've had problems. I've been stuck on the island for a night before. Half of it was because I was hurt, but I broke my paddle. Ended up having to put a stick in, in the center of my paddle and then tape yeah. it back together yeah, and then paddle back like that. Yeah, you I mean, never did, know when you're going to use never duct tape. Did you have some two-part epoxy no. in your bag? That's, yeah. See, that's that's the biggest thing um, as well. Make sure people have good communications. And just because you have a phone. cell phone <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean that it's going to yeah. work, especially if you're, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 miles offshore. Um, there's no signal service out there. Yeah. So always make sure you have a VHF radio. Um, and if your boat does die and 
and you, that VHF radio doesn't work any longer, um, utilize that EPIRB, that PPIRB. Um, that's, we, we say it takes the search out of search and rescue. I know it's corny, but it's so true. The, um, these are great. These are the, the small ACRs. Yes, they're awesome. They they might be a little expensive. People think they're, oh, no, I don't want to pay that much. Well, they don't it, they've yeah. came down quite a bit. You won't yeah, think it's yeah. expensive if you need it. That's yeah. Sure. Uh, like, what man, is your, the what's your life worth? Yeah, exactly. yeah. So. That's for sure. What, what is that? A few hundred bucks? Uh, those are about 300. Yeah, they're about 300. But what's nice is, is when you get them, uh, you actually register these online. So when if I if I have an issue and I have to hit that SOS, the Coast Guard knows my name. They know where Everything. I live. They've got my phone number. They've got my wife's phone number. They have every bit of information to contact my family and to come out and locate. It's got a that, strobe on it. And that's good, too. A lot of times we'll get signals off of it, um, and it's not registered, but it's just somebody at home. It got uh, mm-hmm. put in a bucket of water, yeah, or happened. somebody yeah. was testing it and it wasn't actually testing. It was going off for real. Um, but if, if you have all that registration in there, then we can just, that's a quick phone call. It's a quick phone call, yeah. uh, Instead of, I don't know. A helicopter sending, flying uh, yes, over your house. Yeah, somebody <laughs> yeah. trying to go find you. And that's, the pilot's up there going, I don't know, man. We're in the middle of the state. But. <laughs> and your kids got it clipped to their shirt and they're yeah, in the right. pool. Yeah. 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 So definitely register. That can get expensive, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, it can. That's for sure. You know, uh, I was wondering, do you guys... Do you guys get a lot of EPIRB hits during the year? Is that something that's common? Do you guys run into that a lot? It is common. Just, there's all sorts of different cases that we end up on, but um, EPIRB hits are one of them. Just make sure it's registered. Um, but if you're out on the water, absolutely have one. Um, you can have the personal ones. You can have the big ones that are on your boat. Mm-hmm. Um, the larger ones, and I think the smaller ones, too. If it hits water, it'll automatically go off. It will, yeah. The, the other nice thing to have is uh, one of our sponsors, Atlas Tracks. This little device here is a boat tracker. You wow. can you can put it in in your your truck, your car, your personal watercraft. You can move it around. Um, you can actually obviously we can uh, the Coast Guard's got an app where you can register your float plan and yep. stuff like that. You can actually register a float plan with Atlas Tracks, and awesome. they can your family can actually keep keep track of where you're at with these things. These things are really good. Yeah, that, that brings up a great point. Uh, float plans are so huge. Um, you mentioned the Coast Guard app on there. You can just hit one button and fill out all your information, mm-hmm. where you're going, what you have on your boat. So if you're going out for a couple days, um, we know how much water and how much food you have. Um, and that's really helpful in the event of a search. If you don't have something to track or you don't want any friends or family you want to tell where you're going, I don't know if you're going on a fun trip you don't want to tell anyone about. Right. Secret spot. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Secret, secret, secret spot. spot. <laughs> then uh, what we say to do is get a little note card mm-hmm. and write what time you're leaving, what time you plan to be back, and where you plan to go, how big your boat is, and how many people you're taking with you, and just put it on the top of your console in your vehicle, on your truck, and that way, if you go missing, and we go to the boat dock and see that your car's still there with your trailer and there's no mm-hmm. boat on it, then we see that little car and it says, oh, okay, well, this is where they're planning on going. That's we'll, where we'll search first. And it, it takes that time down of trying to search for somebody so much. Yeah, you know that, that. that could be tricky inshore though, because we kind of make up our own names for spots. Like uh, we have a spot called Naked Guy Spot, so uh, like I leave that, they're going to be a little confused. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know if we want to go find this guy or not. Yeah, I don't know. They just made it up at your house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I got a few questions. Uh, let's see. Oh no, no, no! Before that, um, we were talking a little bit earlier. People are going out this weekend. You were talking about people chartering boats, oh, uh, yes. captains, and things like so that. So if you are planning to be a passenger for hire, if you're going to pay somebody to take you out on a boat, it um, doesn't matter what type of boat that you're going to take out, ask that captain for their captain's license. If you are paying for services to go out on a boat, they have to have a captain's license. And it looks like a little passport, a little red passport. Um, it'll have their all their information on there, and it'll have an expiration date. So I would check that too. Um, it is your right, it's your right to ask for that license. If they're taking more than six passengers, they have to have a certificate of inspection. So that boat has to be inspected by the Coast Guard yearly, um, and it's supposed to be posted in a place that's um, easily access- accessible and easy to see as you're entering the boat. So if you don't see a certificate of inspection, um, start asking some questions. Sure. Some red flags should go up and here the, on the, the back The guys of your that Ooh. have spent the time and money to be a captain are more than happy to share more that information. More than happy, and, yes. Oh, yeah. They don't want guys out there. I mean, they took a lot of time. 
and money to become a captain. They don't want to see the other guys out there. No, run definitely it for people not. Either, so, so if, if you're going on um, share sites or on on apps or anything, and it doesn't seem right, um, always ask. Always ask. It's, we say ask the captain. It's your right. Know before you go. Okay. Did we cover disabled boats? I think we did a little bit. Just okay. um, make sure. Like I said before, make sure you're you're looking at everything before you head out on the water. Before that prop spins. Before that paddle goes in. Yeah. Um, make sure you have all your gear. Um, and especially if it's the first time you're going out uh, for this holiday weekend, look everything over two, three times um, before you head on the water. Yeah, and if you're, uh, you know, one of the things that, that we had discussed when we were for our ride along is if you've got a question about your gear, get on channel 16, hail the Coast Guard Auxiliary, and they'll come out and actually inspect your gear. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you go online to the Coast Guard Auxiliary, um, you can schedule yeah. a boat safety check, and it's absolutely free. Mm -hmm. So if you're not sure, unsure, um, you can also go on the Coast Guard app, and you can schedule a boating safety check as well. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, if you want to have so much, just talk about some of the things of getting into the Coast Guard. I noticed when we got there, and of course, like you have a different job than some of the other people, there's a lot of different things that, that you can do in the Coast Guard. Oh, there's so many different jobs. Um, not quite as many as the other services. Um, we are a smaller service. We're about the same size as the New York City Police Department, which is kind of mind blowing. But uh, there's anything from electricians um, to aviation maintenance technicians to cooks, you can be a culinary specialist. Um, they're giving bonuses to different rates as well, different job titles, so it's always a great time to get into the Coast Guard. Uh, I, I enjoy my job immensely. I get to see some of the coolest things on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, in the morning I could be talking uh, to helicopter pilots and in the afternoon talking to people that are out on the cutters and then in the evening doing uh, FPN Outdoors. Are helicopter pilots <laughs> as dreamy as they seem? I'm, I'm joking. Um, a lot I'm of joking. them are married. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's something I, I didn't. Man, I got to stop messing with this mic so much. I, it's something I uh, didn't really think about when we went out on the ride along. I noticed the giant guns that were on some of the boats there. Oh yeah. You guys actually uh, counter terrorism and uh, yes. you guys just had a really big bust out on the water and you yeah, guys do all so, kinds of stuff rather um, than just save people. So definitely, search and rescue is a really our primary mission. Safety at life at sea is really the top. But That's we have. I think about you know yeah, that's what you everybody see. thinks about but there's so many other missions we do um what we call pwcs ports waterways and coastal security so we're securing the ports making sure they're good to go so um say we have a hurricane um, like we did last year uh, we go in and make sure the port is safe for people to come in and out of um, and keep that uh, commerce alive inside and outside of that port. I mean, this is one of the, the largest ports in the U.S., so um, they're doing a great job. Our inspections branches, our prevention branches of making sure that port's open for our, our commerce and economy. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was so cool. I was like, wow, I forgot the, that oh, yeah. they, you guys do that stuff. And then Yeah, we, we have dog talking, handlers. Uh, the whole nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah ev everything. Be... Yeah, those 240s are pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of missions. That's the last thing you want to hear when you're yeah. on the water. Yeah, right. <laughs> the only thing that we don't do down here is ice breaking, thank goodness. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, they, thank they do that up north. Yeah, you probably don't have to do that here. <laughs> yeah, you, no, got the no, good, no. you got the good Thankfully, spot. I, I did, though, when I was in Wisconsin, I did ice rescue, which was insane. Oh. Um, got in a, a big suit, and we were out in you know negative degree weather. Ugh. And the point was to break through the ice so that our other comrades could come and pull us out and get out. And now I'm so glad I'm in Florida. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, you could have went to Alaska, right? Yeah, I could have, oh, but no. Man, brutal, <laughs> I'm here. Man. You got to be made for that stuff. I shut down oh, in the cold. There's some people. I'm, I've, I grew up here, so I'm a, I'm a yeah. beach kid, and oh man, you know. And uh, when I would go up north to visit family and stuff, <laughs> I can make it about ten minutes in the cold before yeah. I start to shut down. Alaska is a big hub for Coast Guard, and a lot of people love it for the fishing and the hunting, especially. Yeah. I, I'm no, thank you. We went I'll up there in down here. 2013. We went to Alaska. Did you? Went halibut fishing. Oh, nice. In That's June. gotta be amazing. Man. Oh, it was great. That's gotta be amazing. And um, there was snow all at the port when we left to go fishing in June. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> nope. That's a big no for me. I'll I pass. Don't know about all that. I'll pass. All right. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but we just saw in the news a guy fell off of a cruise ship, and uh, I'm sure you guys are out there searching and everything. Is that, 
I mean, how do you guys even approach that? Do you guys just... So there, are, there was an, an ongoing search. Um, I, I'm not sure as of right this very second uh, what the status is, but as of this morning and this afternoon, there was an ongoing search. And that's a it's full force. Um, the, I knew we had from Clearwater and uh, HC-130... Uh, that's the big Hercules. Plane. They yeah, had yeah. the big plane um, was going out and searching, and they had uh, a cutter that was out there um, in the water as well. So, uh, I mean, there's there's all sorts of cases that happen, and our, our biggest thing is safety. You know, um, prevention is key, but it's it's hard um, when you're going out and searching. I can't like imagine it's like a needle in a haystack. It is, and the biggest thing, um, especially for fishermen. Uh, which you re- don't really think about, but is to wear bright colors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So oh, I think about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys. I have an orange shirt in my kayak just in case. Yeah, yeah. If, if you remember the um, the story about the guy that was, oh, man, he was out fishing and his he got pulled off his boat by a fish, and his boat was clutch ahead, so it just kept just going. Just left him, yeah. Um, but he treaded water for almost twenty four hours straight. Oof, oof out in the middle and uh but he was wearing a bright yellow shirt and we found him no life jacket amazingly i mean 24 hours 24 hours over 24 hours no life jacket but he was wearing something bright that's a good floater yeah well i think he was an ex-navy pilot so he he kind of knew what he was doing um but those little things will really help um we also say a cool one to do is there's you can get retro reflective tape and if there's a hat that you always take with you Mm -hmm. put that on the back of your your hat um, it's it's a lot harder to find some somebody with dark hair, um, like a needle in the haystack. Sure. I always thought about putting like one of those big blow up balloons in my boat. You know what I mean? Something it like a so blow it, up. Yeah, and it would just be out so you can see it. Yeah. 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 They have they have all sorts of different safety gear, but the the biggest one is going to be your life jacket. Really, yeah, right. that's that's going to save your life. Well, like for me, you know, I'm in a kayak a lot. I tend to wear brighter colors just so I don't get ran over. I mean, those yeah. guys are just zipping around <laughs> yeah. all over oh, the place. Oh, it's smart, it's smart. Yeah, so I, I usually do that, and then uh, I usually keep something bright in the kayak in case I have to signal for some. You know, people can see it a little easier. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know we talked about um, people usually think life jackets, oh, they're bulky or they're not worth it or I'm just going to stow them away until the Coast Guard asks for them. But the last thing you want to do is try and find a life jacket luck, when, right. you're, <laughs> when your boat's overturned. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. So now, now, I fish offshore a lot, so yeah. we generally don't wear our life jackets when we're out there. However, all of this stuff is in a gear bag, yeah. and that gear bag sits out. Now, they make, you know, Stearns is the one that I have here. And this has got the cartridge in it. If I fall overboard, it'll, it, it, automatically, it, it'll inflate. automatically inflate once that little vial catches it with water. They make one that's just a belly man that goes yep. around your belly. I have one of those permanently attached to my ditch bag. Nice. So if the boat goes over or goes under, even if I'm away from it, that bag will immediately shoot to the surface and all this gear is in it. So that's a good idea. idea. So that's a good idea. It's, it's an awesome idea. Yeah. Um, we still say wear your life jacket anyways. Of because course, yeah. what happens if you your boat overturns and you hit your head? Yeah, you're you're if you're unconscious. You're, you're not sure. you're not going to find your ditch better bag if you're unconscious. Now, that's for sure. Better wear your better wear your So you got told by a female. <laughs> no, that's the truth. No, you no, know it, what? It's true though. It that is. I can't even tell you how many boats I've been on in my yeah. life and. Hardly anybody ever wears it. I mean, like if you plan on the, you know, you're gonna go 200 miles an hour or something. Those yeah. guys wear it, but you know. yeah. But and we go out. We're the professionals, and we have to wear a life jacket mm-hmm. sure. every way. Yeah. And we're doing it every single day. So if we're, we're the professionals and we're wearing it, <laughs> our rescue swimmers got a life jacket on. Yeah. Then uh, I don't know. I would maybe hope so <laughs> too, especially <laughs> yeah. you guys wearing those boots and everything. I was like, you guys wear the boots on the boat too. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, that's composite toe. You're not yeah. swimming with those. How about the guys no, with the uh, nine pounds zip total under the t top, the zip. Yeah. And you look up there, you get on your buddy's boat, and it's like corroded white. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not gonna ever open. Oh, right. It's never no, open. No. You better have a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's never, I, now you know if it's the one thing that's nice is those belly ones. They're you're they're not bulky. If, even if you were those, that would at least bring you to the surface. It would, yeah. it, as long as it's out. Coast Guard approved, yeah. that's, that's what all we're caring about. I'm, I'm surprised how small the life jackets have gotten. Um, my day job, I have to do a lot with the safety. Like We have to go through safety stuff all the time because of what I do. And even every year, we have two, we have two or three different groups 
um, of training classes. And even through those, it's like these life jackets are getting smaller and smaller. So I don't understand why it's so... I don't want to wear it. Yeah. I don't want to wear it. There's also a price tag attached with those smaller and smaller ones. That's why a lot of yeah. people yeah. will but have the orange Stewie's again, put away in the bottom. Exactly. Then, but yeah. what's your life worth? Nobody wants yeah. to wear the. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I my ditch bag is probably, all the gear included, is probably close to $1,000. Yeah. I mean, when you I, I don't have my handheld VHF, but I've got a, uh, a Horizon. But for you offshore guys, that's nothing. If you got the money yeah. to be going offshore all the time, it's, it's worth that it's money. It's definitely to, worth it. But yeah. you know what? I bring this in the flats boat. Right. You know, right. it doesn't matter where you're at. You can still <laughs> or, out in the middle of the Is there anybody bay. that wants to ask questions on Facebook before we move on to the next one? Um, I asked that a while ago, and the only Moved thing I in. got was from um, Carolyn saying that this is a great show and great recommendations. Oh, okay. And Michael said that Paul likes dreamy pilots. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know is what that, I was going to say? Is that Michael Wright? Yeah, how did you know? He is, he's uh, he's actually one of the uh, boat captains with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. He's, uh, he's on the Marine unit and the bomb unit, so yeah. Oh, we, that's We do fun. a lot with him. You know, I was going to say, you know, we were talking earlier, Paul and I were talking about the Carnival Cruise, the guy falling off. I'm like, man, they need to make some miniature Atlas tracks yeah. and give people wristbands or something. Like, it seems like oh, yeah. once a year, every other year, somebody's falling off on one of those boats. K- Karen, I don't Karen, see Karen, how they <laughs> fall off. Those rails are like chest know. high. I don't know, I, know but Carolyn, if you something. come up with that, we want, you know, we want to a little, Just a little <laughs> kickback. A little yeah. kickback. Put my face on it or something. <laughs> yeah. I think the the last thing that I'll, I'll get into too is those hazards navigation. I think we talked about in the last show, um, and I know you guys know there are so many places out mm-hmm. there where it's very shallow, uh, and if you don't know your draft, you don't know the area, or you know you've been fishing in the Tampa Bay but you haven't been in the Sarasota area before, make sure you're getting your charts out. Um, that's updated weekly. There's no mm-hmm. reason not to know your area. Um, yep. Just go on to NOAA.com. They have all that you, information. You can fish the same area over and over and over again, and, and you can get a fluke moon chain, uh, moon, you know, moon phase, oh, yeah. and it'll get a lot shallower than you think, and you'll be stuck. Well, it's not just that either. I mean, you need to keep up to date because I've watched entire mile-long sandbar move from one side to mm-hmm. another oh, oh, yeah. yes. in one storm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. things look at Port Desoto. Yep, exact, yeah. exact example yep. right there. That's a great that example. sandbar that's on the left now. When now there's a there? lagoon. Yeah, yeah. it so almost good. connects now. Wait. See that? Yeah. Yeah. You guys know about Hurricane Pass up by me in um, Dunedin, Palm Harbor area. That mm-hmm. used to all be connected, and then I, what was it? The No Name '93 hurricane that has completely made an, a wow. pass. Yeah. And yeah. so now where it's it goes very shallow to where I can walk. Like on water, <laughs> um, halfway uh, halfway across it. She amuses herself. <laughs> How about the giggle. How about yeah. the giggle. So Just we, amuses herself. Well, we say definitely to... keep keep a really good lookout. Um, there's always something under the water. Um, could be palm fronds. Could be a piling. Could be something that was old there. A, an old stilts house could be uh-huh. there so just pay a lot oh, of attention there's, I there have, are just pilings sticking it, out yeah, of and, they're, and they're not marked they're not there's so no reflective if you, tape if you find something that's in a navigable channel so it's in a marked channel and it's a hazard to navigation again go on that coast guard app you mm-hmm. can take a picture of the hazard and send it straight to the coast guard yeah that's um, cool so if you're finding it there's probably 10 15 boats behind you um don't be that guy that says uh okay that's neat, and then the person behind you is the one that gets exactly, stuck. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was actually I was actually sea trialing a boat uh, in the intercoastal after a storm, and I saw something last minute, and I managed to swerve around it. It was a 56 inch TV. What? 56 inch TV. One, and it wasn't like a flat screen. My TV it was one of the big. old tubes, <laughs> you know, the big, big suckers. I, uh, the water. I don't know, man, but. Yeah, storms will do crazy of, things. I've heard of people littering before. Though. That's a bit much. Yeah, <laughs> chucking a fifty. There's no out. lobster, really. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before we close this out, I'm asking for a friend. Uh huh. If you happen to hook into a square grouper, if you know what I'm saying, is it finder keepers rules or is there a <laughs> protocol? Oh man, that's <laughs> for fish and wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming in and talking about no, motor safety you. and everything. Man, again, we had a blast out yeah, going out with for the, sure. you guys. Are always welcome. The crew. Definitely. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's in their permanent party. And Paul like, huh? at the gate. Hey, what are you guys doing, man? I want to see some more stuff. <laughs> we we got a list to be there that this much. <laughs> All right, so uh, thanks again. Uh, it was yeah. great going out with Coast Guard Sector St. Pete 1459er. <laughs> out. Out. <laughs> out. <laughs>
All I right. Mean, so, real quick here, we're going to go ahead and do our sponsors. Uh, that's you, Polly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to do stuff. I get to do stuff. All right. <clears throat> you could have given me a heads up. Well, you know what comes in this part here. Carolyn, I can start without you. Carolyn said that they, um, hey, we can even, hey, we can ever put our trackers on aircrafts and helicopters with altitude, speed, and heading. Ideal for helicopter ditch bags. It's waterproof. Mm-hmm. And they also have something in development that you guys were just talking about in the near future. Oh, uh, don't try and pull that. That was my idea. For Come the on. personal tracker. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. You know what? I would. I would take a personal tracker, even on the kayak, man. Oh, yeah. Anything can happen. I know there. your wife would totally invest in that. <laughs> well, just so you know, now the they, we've got we've got this tracker. This is the boat tracker. They have one that's about the size of this white label right that here. That thing is wow. so that's precise. Show it to the camera. It marked us uh, to the right parking there. spot we were at. Yeah, at but event. they've got the smaller one, and they've got it with a magnet mount. Um, a lot of guys are using them on their motorcycles, personal watercraft. So they, they she does make a smaller one. So right, you got those sponsors there, is sponsor it? boy. All right, Epi and Outdoors is brought to you by Coastal Wealth. Go to mycoastalwealth.com and uh, get your financial future planned out. You don't want to get into your retirement, 70 years old, and uh, figure out you don't have enough money to get through. Now you got to take a job. The only thing available to you is a chicken section. you got to figure out what sex those chickens are. <laughs> Next thing you know, those baby chickens, they're biting off the end of your finger. They think it's worms. They're yep. poking the eye. And let and me it- tell you something. I have chickens. The, the, the poop well, doesn't smell very good. It's and it's, and it's 70, man. Your reaction ain't that good. I know, man. You might get a chicken in the eye or something. <laughs> you could get chicken Ebola. Go to MyCoastalWealth.com. Get your financial future figured out. Don't be a chicken sexer. <laughs> we are also brought to you by Angler Armory. Go to AnglerArmory.com and become a member for a mere $65. Man, they give away such cool stuff. <coughs> oh, you okay with that? I'm okay now. Flying the threat? Mm-hmm. I'm good. Anyways, they got a lot of cool giveaways. Uh, You're eligible for all the stuff that they do there. AngloArmory.com. Kids Kids are free. free. Mm -hmm. Kids uh, members for free. And we were just talking about them. Atlas Tracks. Go to AtlasTracks.com and uh, keep track of your stuff yourself. You just heard all the cool products that uh, we were just talking about a second ago. Mm -hmm. Paul was just holding it up in the air. Go to AtlasTracks.com. Last but not least, we are brought to you by Jellux. Go to Jellux.com and you can have your boat, dock, or trailer in our case, mm-hmm. all lit up. Different sections can do different things. I mean, you can get crazy with the light setup. Uh, we, we've been talking about about a half a year now. Are you ever going to get that video on here, probably? Maybe. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, you can have different sections. Maybe. I mean, one area can be all boom, boom, and the other one can be you can go country in one area. You don't. It's, there's no music involved, but you know what I'm saying. It's a light <laughs> I, show. I know what you're saying. You can go Pokemon, give somebody a seizure. Anything oh, yeah. you want to do. That you can definitely do. Jellux.com. And that's it. All right. What happened to the blue, 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 blue? Well, that's for uh, the weird Florida stories. Oh, you're that's on it. See? That's why we don't let you talk so much. <laughs> 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 All right. We got Scott from got Fletcher you. Custom got Rods you. in today. And uh, we're going to get to talking about custom rods and uh, some of the, the good stuff, the bad stuff, all that kind of you know, stuff. How's it going, Scott? It's going, man. Just So let's start at the beginning. How long have you been doing this? You've been doing this a little bit now? Um, 12 years since 06. I started in 06 as a hobby and just doing it for my buddies and for free, buy them by the parts kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, Got into the social media thing, and then it just uh, kind of takes off. What's oh. what's cool about it? It seems like the rods kind of sell themselves. All you have to do is put it in somebody's hand, mm-hmm. and the next thing they're going, "Oh, I want one!" And they're right, sure, yeah, right, right. It, it's, that's as soon as Brian brought it to my attention, I was like, "Oh yeah, I want one of these, man, right. for sure." But what 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 caught your eye? The color or the the weight or the weight? The just how well it was put together, and that's some of the stuff I want to talk about today. Yeah, just some yeah. of the differences you're going to see in the different kinds of poles different types of blanks you use we were talking a little bit earlier right. there so um let's start off with the basics uh how you're starting you're starting with a blank right so uh for your inshores you know what are, what are you generally working with i know there's um, different kinds inshore you got six to twelve pound eight to seventeen ten to twenty twelve to twenty five up to seven and a half foot and those can be six and a half seven seven two seven three whatever the customer wants um, and then the 
And those are all IM8 graphites, which is top of the line. So that's a measurement, uh, IM8 or IM and then whatever number. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, and that would be according to their weight, maybe? Wraps, the okay. layers uh, in the blank. Um, I really don't know a lot about it. I mean, I know that um, the higher of the IM rating is, is lighter and stronger. That's all we need to know. Right, right. <laughs> lighter and stronger. Right on. That's so, what you know, old school ways, they say, oh, man, this thing's light. I'll break this thing in half or, you know, and, well, let's have you try it first. Yeah, you know? we just did that a little bit ago. I about hurt my back trying to bend that thing in half. <laughs> right, right. I'm a 200-pound man. I right. couldn't even bend that thing all the way around. So. Right. Yeah, that's uh, pretty uh, that's pretty stout. <laughs> For, yeah. All right, so we um, you were talking about there's a couple different kinds of blanks, graphite. Being yeah, you got your graphite blanks, and then you have your your e-glass, which is more of a, you know, offshore can take the beating, you know. A little bit if, heavier, uh, maybe? Let's... The, for the amateur, if um, how many times you fish offshore, Paul, mm -hmm. how many times you've seen a guy, you know, he's getting buried mm -hmm. and that rod touches the side of the boat. What happens to that rod? Gone. If it's a graphite, it's gone. It's gone. If it's an e-glass, you got a little bit more play in there. You know, they can just take the beating. So that's the that's the rod you want to give to your charters, right? <laughs> right. right. Charters right. and kids. Any anybody. And guys I mean, like me that don't go offshore. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and even then, even the most experienced angler, you know, you get a big grouper on the rod, uh, you know, on, on the end of your line, and you're in rough water. You, that boat may, you know, may, yes, may, may move over, over and, and fling you in there, and then that fish will make a dive. You're there. <laughs> I mean, it, it happens. And what I do in my boat. If I got somebody, you know, uh, a smaller person or something or a kid that they might get hammered, I keep a old piece of EVA grip, mm -hmm. cut it in half, and I'll slip it on that rod. So if they hit that railing, it's hitting that EVA yeah. nice. foam. And here, just lay it on the gunnel. Pool noodles work good too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. good for your rod and the boat. So. Right. <laughs> right. And a floating device. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you the first time I ever went offshore, my friend Dan took me. I was probably, oh, I don't know, 1920. And I, you know, I fished inshore a little bit. You know, I wasn't even that serious in the fishing at the time. And uh, we go out and we go grouper digger. And that's the first thing that happened to me. Like, we're like, now, Jay, when this thing hits, you got to be ready for it. I'm like, yeah, man, whatever, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, get yeah. it off my boat. I'm like, I can't, man. So, yeah. Crank don't yank. Yeah. That's what we say. <laughs> Crank don't yank. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, when you start a pull, let's say I uh, I order a pull from you, start to finish. What are we talking about? How long is this going to take to for for uh, to get everything started to the finish? Well, once I touch the rod, when we get to that point, because um, normally I'm two to four weeks out, sometimes longer. Mm -hmm. um, it's four day process. It's a glue up. You have to glue up the uh, your handles. So that's first that. you start off putting on the handles. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a one day deal. Some some people use quicker glues. I don't prefer that. Um, I'd, I'd rather the longer setting glues because they bond better. Sure. Um, so the next day, if it was your that rod in line, normally I grew, glue up six or ten at a time. That way it's I'm worth set. Your time, yeah. 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 But well, it, and plus the glue. I mean, it's hard to mix just a little bit. Sure, it's kind of like fiberglass. You want to get it all right, right. right. You want to get it if you if you got a bunch in line. Let's get it done. Yeah. You know? But um, the next day I would tie it up, or um, if I'm marbling, then I'll do the 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 pretty stuff on it. Sure. And that's kind of an art all into its own, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's, it was it's a lot of easy. practice. Yeah. yeah. A lot of practice. That's what Brian was telling me. I was like, ooh, man, when I make mine, man, I want this and that. He's like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then that's another day. So if it's marbling, then that's two days, which, um, you know, it's 10, 15 minutes here and there. Then once the marbling dries, then we're tying on. And then normally, if it's just an inshore rod, I can do one in about an hour, you know. Just getting it with the up. trim bands, getting all the guides and on. That, that's twelve years. Like you let me in there the first time, it's going to yeah. be a few hours. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Brian took him about a day. Was it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of like Angelo. He does. He ties the 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 bucktails and all that stuff. Yeah. Now I've made them at home myself out of actual bucktails and stuff. 
I'm sitting there and take, here, it takes forever. And they come out looking just haggard. I mean, mm-hmm. they work, but they don't look pretty. Meanwhile, Angela, who's been doing it forever, is like, doo, 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 done. You know what I mean? Well, if, you have, if you have ten guides on the rod, um, you know, you got to tie your main color and then your trim band. That's just the basic. Mm-hmm. Brian was on my other wrapper because I have two wrapping stations. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, let's race. He goes, okay. So I went through all 10 guides and then back trim bands. And I think he had like four of just the... Right, the wraps. He's like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Yeah, it's not a fair comparison. I hope he's not watching. Oh, he will be. Oh, yeah. Oh, he is. Is he watching? (laughs) Here, he'll be coming. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah, Brian... uh, But he's getting good. He's getting good. Yeah, and he when he puts his mind on something... Yeah. The only thing, uh, we were out fishing this past weekend there. I had to give him another pep talk. That guy, man, I tell you what, man, if he's not catching fish when he wants to, he gets all pouty, gets all baby. <laughs> no. Then he, you know what, though? He was like, you know what? The snook are biting it. And then he went over, he switched over and put on a clinic of catching whiting. Whiting, yeah. Bang, 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 bang. We had some which was, which was fish tacos. Phenomenal. Oh, ah, so good. Oh, no, that was so good. All right, so um, did we go through all four days? We? Yeah. Well, no, not really. And then, uh, you, you know, you're tying it on, and then that's the first coat day of your epoxy. Mm-hmm. And then you have to do some trim up work and um, usually two to three coats of epoxy. I do thin coats. Okay. You know, because um, it just, to me, it comes out better. Looks better, and I'm sure, because like, I'm a painter, I know about coatings and everything. If you yeah. put on things too fast, too thick. Well, if, if you, you try to problems. put them on too thick, if you look at some rods, when you're a rod builder, you pay attention. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you'll see some with like a wave or a big, I call them footballs. Um, no to football. So, <laughs> That's the one time football's bad. <laughs> right, right. So what you'll have is on each guy, you'll have a, a oval, a football, because right. they put too much epoxy in it kind of yeah. drooped. Sinking so, in the middle. Right. right. So... That's why I do the thin coats. Yeah. Get rid of them footballs. That makes sense for sure. So, so that's your four days. Mm-hmm. That's the four days. Oh man, that sounds like a lot. And then, I, so, I just and then, imagine the whole, the wrapping and all that. Just oh, yeah, that's so tedious. It, well, it, no, not you know. Well, when you know what you're doing, but when you're trying to, when it, especially if you're making it for yourself, you're like, you need to get this thing perfect. Well, man. you know, that's what I do for everyone. I, you know, if I don't like it, I, I cut it off. And start over because. That's somebody's custom, you know, and it's not the colors, but you're building that for them that they can't get off the shelf anywhere else. No, that's right. Especially, uh, do you want to grab a couple? You want to grab one or two of those and show us some of those off? All right, what do we got here? This is, uh, watch her head. Yeah, you're fine. You're all right. This is a, um, eight foot, 15 to 30 pound. Can you hold that up just a little bit higher to that camera there so they can kind of see the handle there? I don't know how much detail they can see on that, but that is an but absolute this is, this beautiful is, bowl. This is my water. I caught the water marbling. But um, this is wind grips. I prefer wind grips. Wind grips? Some people prefer cork, cork but they get slimy to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, these don't. These stay sticky like a golf club. Sure. You know? They must, they, they must work if golfers use them. Yeah, I was just so. about to say, it's pretty yeah. much the same stuff that the yeah. golfers use, right? Out there sweating, yep. you know, oh, yeah. and they can hold on to them. And, so, and um, you, can, you can tell the difference in grips when you when you got golf clubs. They, they have I won't hit you, I promise. They, they have, <laughs> yeah, they have yeah. different types, too. Yeah. It makes a difference. And um, But these are all double foots for, um, this is like a heavy snook, big snook, uh, Angelo. With GSJ jigs, yes, Mister Mister Forty Inch, I put on there. <laughs> those guys kill it, man. They need yeah. these custom rocks, yeah. man. Those guys, Sam and Brian it. McGill, yeah, they just kill it. They man. they do a good job, and I put him a snook down here on the end since yeah. uh, he's all about the snook fishing. Absolutely beautiful pole. That's Angelo. So, I, but if you'll see the guides, you'll see there's no footballs. It's nice and straight. Yep. So that's one of my pet peeves. So I don't. Yeah, when you get to be a perfectionist, that's something there. When, oh, yeah. you, when you master an art, though, you're kind of tear things right. apart. Right. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a master, but... Yeah, no, I, master, I, no masters ever do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, I make mistakes too, you know, and overlook things sometimes, which we all do in the custom rod building world. Sure. So um, you were saying the wind grips. Is there a specific, you know, eyelets or any other components that it, maybe people should look for when they're buying a custom rod that you would recommend? Um, I would say if, if you're going to have your uh, custom built and that custom rod builder tells you that they're putting Fuji guides or Alps components mm -hmm. on that rod, when you pick it up, look at the component because it will have the Fuji logo or it will say Alps on it. Yeah. Um, those are Fujis, and if you look on those those guides, they say Fuji. If you look at the offshore rod I have here, those are all Alps components, and they say Alps on the side of them. If not, if they don't say f the brand on them, then give them back to the guy. Yeah. Tell them to put on them what you paid for. Put on for. the right stuff. Yeah. Right, right. All right. Well, that's uh, that's that was really the one of the big things that I wanted to to get out there is just you know because a lot of people maybe they're just getting into fishing or yeah you know like e even me I learn stuff every show I'm not an expert on anything so yeah. you know it's it was, it's good to know uh, you know you could go and buy a production uh, sure rod and have a great time it'll last you a long time but I think a lot of the allure of the custom rod is getting exactly what you want not only just the great components but I mean. It's a piece of art uh, in the end of it if you get yeah, it from the right person. For like, sure. These are beautiful poles. Yeah, and this was a, for a guy's girlfriend. And uh, she told me the color she wanted. And he had told me what the purpose of the rod was going to be for. Mm -hmm. So I built that kind of rod. Yeah. And that's one thing, too. If you don't know a lot about fishing or a lot about rods, or ask your rod builder. Tell them, hey, I'm going to fish for snook and trout and redfish what is the best ask them and if they can't answer your question find another rod builder yeah yeah exactly i mean in a perfect world everybody's going to come to fletcher's but no 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 <laughs> no i'm not here for that because um there's a lot of guys out there that do things that i don't do no more right and um marbling that's kind of my thing um but i can do the chevrons and the diamonds and the all that but there's a lot of guys that are good at the craft and but ask questions sure. you know don't don't let that rod builder build your rod you tell them what, what you want what you want yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly and if they don't build it tell them to redo it all right so the big thing to check for is no footballs no footballs <laughs> no no that, that, <laughs> I'm messing I mean, no. you want to make sure you got the right components on there get the stuff that you paid for and then uh you know ask questions there. yeah ask sure. questions yeah don't 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 accept that rod if that's not what you want right yeah and be picky about it i mean yeah that's yeah. what they're paying for exactly and, and honestly most of us um our rods are cheaper than most production rods yeah that was yeah. the thing that surprised me when i was talking to brian about it like i really expected a, a lot more hefty price tag attached to it for what you're getting right and i was i was yeah. very surprised it was a little more affordable than you think and i've had some guys comment and tell you know through the um the social media world mm -hmm. you know i don't see how he charges what he charges well i don't have overhead yeah you know first thing about social media is you don't listen to those people yeah. right. <laughs> right right and that's what i tell my buddies don't get upset about yeah, that don't worry, about, don't that, worry about that all that negative yeah. stuff just i don't even read that stuff yeah. trust me yeah. there's plenty of right. stuff on the internet about me and i don't want to read so <laughs> and, and if imagine. you want to get in the rod building call me I'll help you out. Yeah, yeah, that's a. It's Brian a fun was, hobby. Brian was super stoked about it. Yeah. He's like, dude, this is so cool. You know? Yeah, yeah. I always said, oh, yeah, I want to, I want to, I'm going to do that in my free time. What's the matter, Amanda? Are you <laughs> trying to say something? Well, you might want to listen to what some of them say because Jason just said that Fletch is the real deal. He has a unique signature style, and he has never over backwards to help my in my rod building. We're gonna have to work nice. on your reading. We're gonna do that's some reading practices. Says. Do you want, I mean, I'm Ebonics, but I'm reading. He might, he, Jason word might be on the whiskey tonight. Oh, okay, I got you. There it, is that a or typing on as the long phone. as he's not on a boat, we're yeah. good. No. Yeah. Typing on the phone, too, if he's on his phone, I mess up more stuff. And then voice to text, forget about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So don't get mad at me because they don't I'm know just how to write take a easy, sentence killer. Don't correctly. Hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Come at me. <laughs> you even lift, bro. bro. You even lift, bro. Oh, man. No, he, he's a guy that wanted Jason, and he wanted to get into rod building. I've helped him out quite a bit, you know? That's awesome of you to do that, man, and just pass it's, that, that trade along a little yeah. bit, you know? Yeah, I mean? it's, 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 it's a hobby, you mm -hmm. know? And it's kind of went a little crazy for me, 
you know, I'm pretty behind right now. So I bet, man, you've been getting a lot of attention lately that I noticed. But uh, well, speaking of that, uh, what is the best way for people to follow you online and and get a poll? Uh, three Fletcher's custom rods. They can go on there. There's oh, you know what? I got your. I got there's your quite right of uh, there's quite a hey, few. Hey Max, can you go to my screen? Go ahead. Keep talking. There's quite a few um, different examples of colors and variations, but um, a lot of people like to text. I'm not a texter. Um, right. I'll tell them it's easier just to call me. That way I can talk to them. I can get a 30-minute texting conversation done in five minutes. Yes. You know, I'm, especially I'm with you. especially with you. when it when it comes to rods. You know, it's hard to explain and ask questions, and things get mixed up. All right, Max. All right, so, so that's uh, at Fletcher's underscore custom underscore rods on Instagram. And uh, go to his feed. He's, he's got a bunch of uh, his polls that he's been working on, videos of that, and a bunch of stuff. And there's even a picture of way down here, Monster Mike holding a big old peacock bass. Yep, yep. We do the, all the Monster Mike rods. Pretty um, cool. He's a good guy. I like yeah, him. yeah. He's, he's crazy. Him and Brian, the CEO, we yeah. went down there and peacock bass fished with him. That was awesome. Nice. Don't you peacock bass? Oh yeah, we I've done Peacock. a lot of that. Got, I think, I think J, Jason's hooked into it now. We need to go back down there and, and do that again. Well, we I was going for the clown night fish. I accidentally show everybody one. up every time we go for a new species. I <laughs> probably have to sit back a little bit, let them catch some fish. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I'm uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. Uh, Jason and I are gonna be taking a ride over to the East Coast uh, with our thirty Intrepid, and uh, we're gonna be going over to the uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters tournament that we do it's a big charity event we do every year and uh, we're going to go down uh, Thursday after work so I'm going to get him out offshore on Friday and start putting him into a few fish we'll see we gonna, will see gonna, 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 gonna see how well that worked for him <laughs> and if uh, anybody's into deep drop rods um, check me out in a couple weeks I'm working on uh, two of those right now for a guy on the east coast nice awesome. all right well thanks for coming in today Scott I appreciate it uh, you know, I think we went a little long for me to do the current events today, so I'll just uh, I'll save that for next week. I got some good ones, but we'll we'll go ahead and hold off on those. Okay. Some current events. All right. Um, we've got the whiskey whiskey bent whiskey bent barbecue thing. Yeah, whiskey, whiskey bent grand opening uh, in Dunedin, Florida. Uh, go to our Facebook page. We've got an event set up there, so you can get all the information. I believe it starts at ten o'clock uh, over in Dunedin. Eleven. Eleven o'clock. Okay. Eleven o'clock. And uh, they've got a ton of food Food that's going to be out there. Um, right. You just want to do it? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you want to go for it. It's all you. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just know that they're going to have food. <laughs> it's the all those, they're going to have the Traeger grills out there, all that good stuff. So uh, definitely come out yeah. to that. It's going to be a good event. Um, definitely looking forward to some barbecue, man. I can't wait. <laughs> my stomach just went raw. Yeah. I'll, just wa I'll walk down it. from my house. Ch uh, Chad, oh, is that where you're at? Uh, yeah, I live down in Geneva, nice. right yeah, on the trail. Definitely come out. Definitely yeah, come Chad out. Ward, uh, he's a world round uh, grill master. He's going to be out there cooking. There's a couple other uh, uh, big grill masters that'll be out there cooking as well. So, awesome. all right, everybody, you can find everything FPN related on FPNoutdoors.com. <laughs> And if you could, while you're, uh, you know, you're chilling out, you're on your phone all the time, stop by Instagram, give us a like, a subscribe. Our YouTube channel is in need of some love. Absolutely. We are starting to put a bunch of, uh, we're going to be uh, YouTube focused this year. We were really Facebook yeah. last year. We're trying to get that up. So if you could stop by, give us a subscribe and a like, check out our videos. I got, like I said, I've got uh, two Coast Guard videos up there, one of the man overboard, and there's another video of two walkthroughs of their uh, what the response boat. The, response the, the boats, 45 yeah. and the 29, 29 correct? 29, yeah. Yeah, 29. 29. Paul, I, just like I, I, said. I agreed with you, yes. Yeah, really cool videos. Check those out. And plus, you can see uh, the one where Brian wants to punch a manatee and all that stuff, dude. And all that stuff. <laughs> oh, there. he had the chance. Yeah, he did. He did. He had the I got to call him out. This on manatee was two feet from him, and he turned it was, back and he ran. He strolled up to him. And it was a baby manatee. A baby one. And he's like, um, uh, 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 and then the manatee was uh, like, whatever, dude. He was scared. He was. I'm all right, everybody. Fishing Thank report. Thanks. Oh, yeah. We got a fishing report from Bobby Carroll. Captain Bob Carroll. Or uh, what, what, David Beckham. Uh, Miniature <laughs> David Beckham. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for checking out FPN Outdoors. I want to thank our guests for coming in today. Yeah, and thank you. We will see you guys yeah, next be, week. Be safe this weekend if you're yes, on the water please. for sure. Don't please go. Be safe. Don't do it. Stay home. If you're going to be rain safe. Anyway. Be safe. Tight lines, everybody. Peace. What's going on, FPN Outdoors? It's Captain Bobby Carroll with the Florida Fishing Experience. Today we're going to talk about the snook, whiting, and 
the big trout that are out right now. The snook are on their breeding grounds. They're packing on some heavy weight. Man, I'll tell you what, beef up your tackle. What we liked using was a, a four aught owner hook. All right, we're using a 40 pound leader for these big snook, a 15 pound to 20 pound braid, and we use a medium heavy action rod with a four or 5,000 series reel. When you find one, you're gonna find multiple that are grouped up in good clumps of 20 to 30 fish, and they're all big. So that's your little tip for the snook. Another thing with the trout. Trout are also out in the deeper potholes. We found them in four to five feet, all range anywhere from 18 to 22 inches. Uh, use your favorite, you know, size white bait, uh, crank baits. You can use good auxiliaries, or you can use some of the slicks like this. But they're all eaten heavily. But if you guys are looking for a fish to eat, don't overlook a whiting. This past weekend on our trip, we probably kept 15 whiting between the six of us. And man, that is some of the greatest fish taco meat you've ever had. So if you guys are catching whiting, make sure you save them and start eating them. Start saving the redfish and the trout. Try out some whiting, I promise you'll love it. Bobby Carroll with the Florida Fishing Experience. If you'd like to book a trip, call me at 727-271-3257. Catch you all later.